This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to the program. My name is Rick Renner, and dear friend, I've been sitting in my chair just waiting for this moment to begin so we could be together and dive into the Bible. Isn't the Bible just wonderful? And I'm believing that today and every day this week, you're going to get something brand new from the Word of God about the ministry of angels. I'm teaching a brand new series, which is called The Ministry of Angels. It's five parts. It comes in multiple formats, but the subtitle says, How to Activate Angels to Help You Right Now. Did you know that angels are available to help you? Most people don't know how to activate them. But this week, we're going to see how to activate the help of angels. And this series comes with a study guide. Now, to be honest, there's a lot of strange things out there about angels. And so we need to know what the Bible says. And in this program, we always base what we teach and what we believe on what the Bible says. And here, we're looking at what the Bible says about the ministry of angels and how to activate their help in our daily life. And I'm offering you two books that are just amazing. One is by my friend Joseph Z. It's called Servants of Fire, Secrets of the Unseen War and Angels Fighting for You. I had Joseph on my program for a full week where we talked about the ministry of angels. If you didn't order this book at that time, please order it now because this may be the best book I have ever read on the subject of angels. It is simply amazing. And we're also offering you a second book, which greatly impacted me many years ago, and I really believe is one of the best books on the ministry of angels. And it's simply called The Truth About Angels. And it's by my friend, Terry Law, who now is in heaven. But Terry wrote this amazing book. The subtitle says, Angelic Encounters from a Biblical Perspective. The back of the book says, Angels, Fad, Fantasy, or reality. Where do angels come from? What do they do? What do they look like? How much power and authority do they have? What limitations do demons have? Are there such things as guardian angels? All of that is covered in this book by Terry Law called The Truth About Angels. But you friend, you can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call right now. And please, when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you. We're waiting to pray for you right now. That is not a trite statement. I really mean that from the depths of my heart. The moment our phone rings and you call us, we're going to release our faith for God to do something wonderful in your life, and He really will. If you don't want to call, you can send us an email. Either way, as soon as we hear from you, we're going to really release our faith, and Jesus is simply going to do something stupendous. He promises to do that. In Jeremiah 33, 3, where he says, Call unto me, I'll hear you, I'll answer you, and I'll do great and mighty things. And he will. But we'll pray better for you if we know how to pray. So call us right now. The number's on the screen or send us your email. But today we're going to be talking about the ministry of angels. And again, everything we teach in this program is based on the Bible. And by the way, we need a revival of the Bible Say amen. Let's believe for a revival of the Bible to come to the church. But I want you to reach for your Bible, and I want you to open your Bible to Hebrews chapter 1 to what I consider to be the anchor verse for this series. But in the New Testament, angels are entrusted with the care of the elect and the heirs of salvation. So if you're an elect and if you're an heir of salvation, then angels have been entrusted with the charge to take care of you. And we read about this in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, which says, Are they angels, not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So if you're saved, and if you're going to inherit your full salvation when you go to heaven, then this verse describes you. Angels have been sent forth as ministering spirits to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. So in this verse, we find out real important information about the charge which has been entrusted to angels. So let's look at it. First of all, it says, are they angels, not all ministering spirits? That word ministering in Greek is very important. 
It is a word which describes sacred ministry. So first of all, it tells us the ministry of angels is sacred and they're authorized to do sacred service. You say, well, what kind of service are they authorized to do? Well, this word, which here is translated ministry, is used in the Old Testament to describe the priests who were charged with assisting worshipers with various needs. And here we find that God has assigned to angels the sacred task of serving the various needs of those who are the heirs of salvation. And if you are saved, and if a future full salvation is in front of you, then angels have been sent forth to assist you. That is clearly what this verse says. And in fact, it says they've been sent forth. The word sent forth is the Greek word apostello, which here describes one that is dispatched on an assignment to represent a high ranking power, which means God has dispatched them and they are his representatives. It describes one empowered to carry out a specific duty assigned to him. So God has assigned to angels certain duties. And it goes on to say, to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. The word ministers is the Greek word diakonia. And listen to what it means. It describes a high level servant, a sophisticated and highly trained servant who served the needs of others. So now we find out that angels are high level servants they are highly trained servants who've been sent forth to meet the needs of others, and that means your needs. It is a servant whose primary responsibility is to serve food and to wait on tables. That's how the word was first used, but it pictured a waiter or a waitress who painstakingly attends to the needs, the wishes, and the desires of his or her clients, or servants who professionally pleased clients, or it depicts a type of serving that was honorable, pleasurable, and done in a fashion that made people being served feel as if they were nobility. So now we find not only have angels been dispatched, not only are they to meet our needs and assist the various things we're facing in life, but they have been sent forth to professionally meet those needs and they've been sent forth to serve us. They are servants at the table of God's elect. There's not a single verse anywhere in the Bible which says angels help those that are wicked. However, there's a lot of verses in the Bible that say they are against the wicked. But the primary assignment of angels is to assist those who shall be heirs of salvation. And my friends, that means you and me. And in the Bible, we find that God sends angels to meet his people's needs. He sends angels to strengthen the weary he sends angels to give supernatural guidance, which in the New Testament frequently occurs in dreams or visions. We find that God sends angels to provide protection and deliverance from harm. God sends angels to carry out superhuman feats. God sends angels to make special announcements and to release divine judgment. And God sends forth angels to worship. And it's interesting that the Bible never tells us explicitly how many angels there are. However, when you read Hebrews 12, verse 22, it tells us that the heavenly host of angels are innumerable. You cannot count the angels. That's how many of them there are. But I'm very careful about teaching on this subject because people have a way of getting obsessed with angels. And we know that when people get obsessed with angels, often it leads to doctrinal impurity and deception. For example, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 18, Paul warned against a preoccupation with angels because so-called angels had appeared in the Colossian church and were teaching false doctrine. This also happened in the region of Galatia, which you can read about in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8. But during the first century, much of the false teaching, which the apostle Paul and the other apostles were confronting, was teaching which purportedly had come from angels. But let me tell you, my friend, angels never teach and they never preach the word of God. You will find out in this series, they make divine announcements, but they make announcements verbatim as those announcements are given to them, they're word for word announcements. Angels are never, not ever charged with the business of teaching and preaching. So if you hear that someone has received a revelation that an angel taught them, you can be sure this probably will lead to false doctrine. This is very important for us to understand. But in this series, 
we're going to see a whole list of what angels do do, what angels do perform for those who are the heirs of salvation, and that includes me and you. Say amen. But we'll also find that in the New Testament, there is not a single example of a female angel, not in the Old Testament either. Angels are always represented of being male in character. But finally, we need to remember that this series is about what angels do today, but in the future, angels will have additional responsibilities. For example, we read in Matthew 13, 41 to 42 and verse 50, that angels will be sent forth to separate the sheep from the goats. Then we read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, 7 to 8, that angels will accompany Jesus at his second coming. But for the purposes of what I'm teaching in this series this week, we're going to be seeing what angels do for the saints today. And the first thing we're going to see is angels meet physical needs. So what kind of physical needs do you have? It's quite possible. In fact, it's even probable that there are angels available to help your physical needs, but you didn't know that was part of their ministry. But when you come to Matthew 4.11 and Mark 1.13, we read that when Jesus concluded his 40-day fast in the wilderness, a number of angels appeared to him to meet his physical needs. So let's look at Matthew 4, verse 11. Then the devil left him, and behold, by the way, the word behold means, wow, it is amazing. So as Matthew was recording this event, he got excited about himself, and he said, behold, wow, listen to this. Behold, angels came and ministered unto him, ministered unto him. Mark recorded the same event in Mark chapter 1, verse 13, where he said, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. Both Matthew 4, 11 and Mark 1, 13 says angels came to minister to Jesus. And in both events, the word ministered is the word diakonos, the same word which we have already seen, which describes a high level servant, one that is sophisticated and highly trained, who's been sent forth to serve the needs of others. It pictured a waiter or a waitress who painstakingly attend to the needs, wishes, and desires of the clients, servants who professionally please clients, and it depicts a type of serving that was honorable, pleasurable, and done in a fashion that made people being served feel as if they were nobility. And here's what it means. After the 40 days of Jesus fasting in the wilderness when he was physically tired, the angels came and ministered unto him. They became like waiters who came to the table to see what they needed to do for Jesus, and they came to meet his physical needs. I think that is amazing. So when Matthew 4, 11 and Mark 1, 13 tells us that angels ministered to him, it emphatically means that they took on the role of servants and ministered to Jesus' physical and tangible needs after his 40 days of fasting and of being tempted by the devil in the wilderness. So what are your needs? Are you trying to meet them by yourself? My friends, you don't have to do it all alone because angels are available to minister to you and part of their ministry is to meet your physical and tangible needs. But angels also provide strength. They provide strength. And a very clear example of this is found in Luke chapter 22, verse 43, where Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and was under great pressure and was all alone. And the Bible tells us in Luke 22, verse 43, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. When Jesus could find no one else to stand with him, God provided supernatural assistance in the form of an angel who came to strengthen Jesus in his moment of need. And likewise, angels are available to strengthen you. By the way, the word strengthen in Luke 22, verse 43, is the Greek word iniskuo. It's a compound of two words, the word in and the word iskuo. The preposition in means in. The word iskuo means might or strength. The word iskuo denoted men of great muscular abilities like champions or heroes. But when these two words, in and iskuo, are compounded together, the new word means to impart strength, to impart strength to empower someone, to fill a person with physical vigor, to give someone renewed vitality. 
It depicts a person who may have been feeling exhausted or depleted, but suddenly he receives a robust blast of energy that instantly charges him so he can go on. That's the word strengthen that is used here, which means when Jesus' disciples were not faithful to him and it seemed that they abandoned him for the moment, and they couldn't be depended on in his hour of need. God provided an angel who empowered, recharged, and imparted strength to Jesus, and they recharged him physically and renewed his vitality so he could victoriously face the most difficult hour of his life. Now, my friends, that is amazing, which means if you're feeling exhausted and if you're feeling depleted, even though you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, and you do if you're born again, the Bible here teaches that God will also send angels to give you a robust strength, vitality, to recharge you. And my friends, this is part of the ministry of angels for those that are saved. So Luke 22 verse 43 provides a vivid New Testament example of how angels strengthen the weary. But how do you activate these various ministries of angels? Well, in Psalm 103, verse 2, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word, which means you activate angels when you declare the word of God. For example, in the 91st Psalm, It says, he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Now, my friends, that verse is yours, and it declares that angels are available to keep you in every way. But when you quote that verse, suddenly the angels stand to attention because they hear the word of God, and they're activated to perform this ministry for you. And I'm going to give you two examples from my personal life. Many years ago, we were at a moment in the ministry when we were just facing really tough financial times and I was depleted physically. I've been worrying, which I should not have been worrying. Worrying is a sin. You don't have to worry. That's never good for you. It's never productive to worry. It's just a waste of time and it's a waste of emotion. But I've been worrying and I came to the city of Moscow to a meeting where we were supposed to pay TV stations for our TV broadcast. But at that moment, for some reason, The giving of our partners had dipped, and I didn't have the money to pay the station directors. And, oh, I was just brokenhearted because I was going to have to look into their faces and tell them I didn't have the cash to pay for the next month of programs. And I was thinking about all those TV viewers who were watching our program and who were hearing the Word of God for the first time in their lives, and now it was possible that the program would be discontinued. And it just broke my heart. Well, I went to that meeting very late at night at a hotel downtown Moscow, and I just couldn't look into the eyes of those TV directors and tell them that I didn't have the money. So I asked to be excused. I walked out on Tverskaya, which is the main street which runs down into the Kremlin. I walked down Tverskaya, went over to a place where they were doing construction, where there was a rail there, a metal rail, and it was the middle of the winter. It was very, very cold. I leaned against that rail, and I just began to cry. I said, Lord, you've got to do something for me. Lord, you have to do something for me. I need your strength. I'm depleted. I don't know what to do. I don't have the strength to go on. And I remembered the example of the angel appearing to strengthen Jesus in his hour of need. And I said, Lord, please do for me what the angel did for Jesus. And my friend, I'm going to tell you in that moment, it was like the angels were activated, heaven opened, And strength was downloaded into me in that very moment. And my friends, my gusto was renewed. It was robust. And suddenly it was like Clark Kent that came out of the phone booth as Superman. Something happened to me miraculous and instantaneous. I was charged and renewed with strength. It was angelic ministry, which God provided for me. Well, I'm an heir of salvation. And according to Hebrews 1, verse 14, the angels have been sent forth to minister to me. And on that night, they ministered to me just like they ministered to Jesus when he was in the wilderness, just like they ministered to Jesus when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And in fact, I was so recharged with strength and power 
that I wiped the tears from my eyes, walked back up the street to that hotel, went upstairs to where the directors were meeting and said, you know, I don't have the cash with me today, but I'll get it to you in just a few days. My faith was renewed. My strength was renewed. And my friends, that is one of the aspects of angelic ministry that is available to me and to you. And if you're feeling depleted, you can recall the example of what the angels did for Jesus in the wilderness and in the Garden of Gethsemane. Say it out loud, Lord, do for me what you did for Jesus. And according to Psalm 103, verse 2, the moment you speak the word of God, they will hearken to the commandment of the word of God and they will go to work for you. You see, friends, this is part of angelic ministry that is available to you. And I just want to ask you, have you ever had a moment when you were supernaturally recharged? Is it possible that was the result of angelic ministry? Or maybe you know that it was a result of angelic ministry. And if you're in a place today where you feel like you just can't go on, Jesus was nearly in that same place in Luke chapter 22. And in that moment of need, an angel appeared from heaven, strengthening him. And my friends, that's part of angelic ministry, which is available for you as well. I think that is just amazing that angels meet physical and tangible needs and angels provide strength to the weary. And if you're an heir of salvation, this ministry is available to you. Angels will do it for you if you'll activate that help and you do it by declaring the word of God. And the moment they hear the word, they hearken to it, they excel in strength and immediately they're going to fulfill that scripture in your life as well. They'll meet your physical and tangible needs and they will provide strength to you if you're feeling a little weary. But hey, I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you. Did you know angels have been assigned to assist you and that they're available right now at this very moment to help you if you know how to activate their help? Rick Renner has experienced angelic help and in this anointed, powerful five-part series, Rick wants to show you how angels can meet your physical needs and provide you with strength, how angels can provide supernatural protection and deliverance for you, how angels are often dispatched to deliver vital information and to make divine announcements, how angels are available to perform superhuman feats for you. This is what angels will do for you if you know how to activate their help. This new five-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $11. But wait, we're also offering the book Servants of Fire by Joseph Z and The Truth About Angels by Terry Law. Rick says these are possibly the two best books ever written on the subject of angels and what they are sent to do for believers who know how to activate their help. Servants of Fire is a fabulous power-packed book, and it can be yours for just $22. The book, The Truth About Angels, will equip you to know how to call on angelic help when it is needed, and it can be yours for just $20. Order the bundle of the series, The Ministry of Angels, How to Activate Angels to Help You Right Now, and the book, Servants of Fire by Joseph Z, and The Truth About Angels by Terry Law. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. My friend, I want to tell you something exciting. You know, over three decades that my family and I have lived in the former Soviet Union, God has opened a lot of effectual doors for the Word of God and for the ministry. But recently, a door opened unlike any other door, and we're walking through it. Several years ago, we became the owners of a new satellite network that is called GNC, the Good News Channel. And it broadcasts around the world 24 hours a day, seven days a week into 83 nations of the world. But now we have received remarkably a license from the Russian government, the first Christian organization to ever receive this license that gives us the ability to take the signal of our network into every home in Russia through GNC, our network, and you can be a part of that. If you're already a part of our giving team, thank you. But if you'd like to be a part of this giving team, we invite you to join us. We need you. People are crying out for answers, and together we, and you working together, we can really make a difference in somebody else's life. 
When I was growing up, I did not understand that angels were available to minister to me. Angels to me were almost something of myth or fantasy or something that appeared in the Bible, but nobody today really had any experiences with angels. But hey, why not? According to Hebrews chapter 12, there is an innumerable company of angels in the church, so it makes sure that once in a while we ought to see one or encounter one or receive the ministry of an angel. And according to Hebrews 1 verse 14, they have been dispatched to minister to anybody that is saved and an heir of salvation. That means me and that is you. And we've seen today that angels meet physical and tangible needs and they provide strength for the weary. But we're just getting started. Please don't miss tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to see what else angels will do for you. But I want you to have the whole series, which is called The Ministry of Angels, How to Activate Angels to Help You Right Now. It's a powerful series, and it comes with a wonderful study guide. And we're offering you two books. One is by my friend Terry Law, who now is in heaven, but it's a wonderful book. It's called The Truth About Angels. The subtitle says Angelic Encounters from a Biblical perspective. Please order this book. It is simply marvelous. And we're also offering you a book by my friend Joseph Z. And the name of the book is Secrets of the Unseen War and Angels Fighting for You, Servants of Fire. My friends, servants of fire, ministering spirits, they've been sent forth to minister to you. And today I told about a moment when I myself was strengthened by an angel. And that story is in our autobiography, which is called unlikely. If you don't have unlikely, please go online and order it. In this book, I tell about several angelic encounters, which I've had in my own life. But thank you for being with me today. And friend, I pray in Jesus name right now that you will avail yourself to the angelic ministry that is there to meet your physical and tangible needs and to supply you with all the strength you need. In Jesus name. Amen. Denise and I are going to be coming to the United States and we're going to be ministering in some churches. And if you can join us, please try to come to one of the following meetings. On Sunday, February 18th, we'll be with Pastor Frederick Price Jr. and Lady Angel Price at the Crenshaw Christian Center Faith Dome in Los Angeles, California. And on Tuesday and Wednesday, February 27th and 28th, we'll be with Pastor Jerry Moore at the Word of Life Church in Miami, Florida. I cannot begin to tell you how happy Denise and I would be to see you in one of those meetings, but please go online for more detailed information. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. 